the background to this webinar is that recent health and safety legislation changes in Australia and indeed in New Zealand mean that corporations must take a far more active approach to managing the risks associated with corporate travel uh, or risk criminal prosecution. To, co to cover the topic today and to give us a guidance, we have uh, Alana Titterton and Tony Ridley. So I like to um, sort of distill things down into easy um, liability formulas and calculations to make it easy to work out well, what is um, the liability piece uh, under WHS laws. And I've got one liability formula for how this plays out in relation to workers and one for how it plays out in relation to other persons. So let's take a look at the first liability formula, which is uh, liability to workers. So you have a PCBU. That PCBU exposes the worker to risk. That risk arises while the worker is at work. Then you have liability, and that's subject only to reasonable practicability. So a couple of points to note about that formula. It's not about the place of work. It's not about um, where you're, um, you're actually organising the travel from. So you'll often be, um, under the old laws, you'd be really thinking about your own workplace and thinking about having safety systems in place for that workplace. But there's no um, limitation to just your workplace here in this particular formula. It's all about the risk to the worker and the worker being at work at the time, regardless of where they're conducting that work. So let's say um, you're an organisation, you send a group of your contractors um, and employees overseas to attend a conference. Let's say that conference is held in Syria um, and in, in, uh, that worker is going to be at work because in attending that conference for you, they're going to be considered to be at work. Then you've got a, 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 an organisational liability exposure subject only to reasonable practicability. So you can see how, how it plays out, not necessarily about your workplace and qualified only by reasonable practicability. So we might move to liability formula number two. Move the next slide. So this is we've now we've talked about how the worker liability formula plays out. Now we're talking about the other person's aspect of the primary duty. So you have a person, and that person is put at risk, and that risk arises from work carried out in the conduct of your business or undertaking. Then you have liability, and that's only subject to reasonable practicability. So you have liability if there is a connection with the undertaking. So under old safety laws, you, you would tend to focus on your own employees and workers, and making sure your own workplace is safe. But now, when you look at that liability formula, you'll be able to see just how broad it is and see that travel providers have liability under WHS laws when they're making arrangements for any persons to travel because it's not just about looking at your own workplace or looking at your own people. So how you get that liability is through that connection to your undertaking. Your undertaking is providing travel arrangements and logistics, so you need to develop and implement systems for health, safety and security arrangements as you are in the process of conducting that travel arrangement activity. Now, I keep talking about this qualifier of reasonable practicability, so I want to give you the ACT definition now and we'll move to the next slide. 